So welcome back to the channel guys. So today I had the opportunity to drive the Scandinavian designed X-Shore boat. Uh, quick specs on this thing. It's 26.2 feet long, 8.5 feet wide, and has a draft of 2.6 feet. Theoretically it has a range of 100 nautical miles. It has a 170 kilowatt motor and 126 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. It'll reach a top speed of 30 knots with a cruising speed of around 20. Um, we didn't really get there today, but we got we got pretty close. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I think that the uh, the range is is a little off as well, but it could be different. Um, anyway, it's got a 24 inch Garmin uh, screen on it, um, which is kind of neat because I can plug it into my Garmin watch. And both the Garmin watch and the Xshore app, which you can download, uh, functions as a remote key. So if you fall overboard while you're wearing the watch or uh, have your phone on you, the man overboard safely overboard feature uh, triggers the boat to stop automatically, which is actually quite a nice feature. Um, other than that, uh, I'll give a quick rundown at the end. Uh, I did have clients on board this morning, but I thought this was a little bit different, so I uh, decided to do a quick video of this. So here's our quote-unquote uh, quasi-sea trial of the X-Boat. So this morning, I'm taking out the X-Shore boat. This is an all-battery-powered, propelled, functioning, electric boat. You can see the water coming out the back. That's for the cooling system of the batteries. This is our rudder system. We have a single rudder with autopilot, fully Garmin controlled. That's the battery bank right there. You can see all of the bonding wires, grounding wires. Can't get to a lot of this. I'm going to close this back up. Seating for you know, roughly six people. Nice little counter here. A couple of cup holders, place to hang on, little storage compartment. Batteries and propulsion underneath here. There's, it's a huge hatch that comes up, so I'm not gonna pull that up for you today, but that's where that is. And then there's a couple little cubbies. A forward for storage here and here. Put the cushion covers in there and then this is a huge of course every respectful boater should have a yeti cooler on board so we got our yeti cooler on board and uh more storage down here a uh, bunch of life jackets and some cleaning supplies and extra fender um, some pretty good space in here and then that's where you plug in And here's the control panel. And let's see. We're gonna go navigate. And so our Garmin comes up and then this is our cluster here. Rudder indicator and then three different speed settings here. Speed steer cruise and then power silence. Um, I think this will go 26 knots. And then there's a key right here. Push the button right here to turn it on. And that's your control to go forward and reverse. So notice that it says motor off and go motor on. I gotta remember how to do, do this. Uh, yeah, we gotta do, as everything else, we have to do a software update. And we've got our bow thruster here, which we need because this thing backs to the port side hard. So we definitely need to use a bow thruster, even though I don't like to, we don't have a choice. And let's see, I may have to disconnect this. Forget how this works. See, now motor ready. So you have to disconnect that, which is our plug. Motor ready, motor on. So now I just go forward whoop, and back and she works. So nice and silent and um, it's pretty easy to operate. Bow thruster is pretty strong. So we'll take it out and go for a little cruise. Going through, doing my checks on this boat and you can tell how many times it's been out. Here's literally the anchor and the anchor chain still all wrapped up in 
a big spool, not even connected. So, <laughs> yeah, probably not the best thing in the world. <laughs> this should get uh, this should get fixed before before we really go out. But I'm I'm taking out clients right now, so I'm going to see if I can cut this apart and and have an anchor ready. You should always have an anchor ready for emergencies. So this boat's been out many times with not not with clients, but just with people in the marina and stuff like that and that should have been addressed also one other thing that is peculiar about this boat is that this is the only screen right here um there's nothing else uh so therefore i have to bring my handheld radio um so they're gonna be putting a radio underneath here i guess and then um just have the the hand uh, set right here with the um, digital display I I'm not quite sure why this boat cost this much money and they don't have a VHF radio so but we've got our stereo system right there so that's always got to have a radio um, bilge pumps are located down in here as well right there as well as navigation lights so really kind of funky system your shutoffs right here I mean, it's interesting things that you would think would be normally a very accessible on a console are kind of tucked away and hidden away in cabinets and fire extinguishers in case we need it. That's it. was that run like less than a minute so I went from 79% to 75% on the battery oh yeah all right so we are back in batteries at 64 we ran I don't know 10 to 12 knots um, I'd like to switch it off yes I'd like to switch my motor off so, and we were in speedster mode most of the time. 64%, um, I'm not quite sure we can get two trips out of this without having to recharge it. Um, some other things, um, for me, the seat, I had to end up putting this seat down here. Instead of leaving it up, I'm way too short to lean on here and put my feet here. It's um, just really, really awkward for me. Um, and then the biggest thing too is this windshield. Uh, it's tough to see probably in the camera, but where I'm sitting right here, I'm looking through this curved part of the glass. Everything is distorted around here. So I found myself constantly looking out in this direction. I don't know if you can see the distortion maybe, but um, if you're looking straight on, that's fine. But we are steering and looking mostly over in this direction, um, 
it's really distorted and so that was sort of a, an annoyance but besides that the boat ran well um it handled pretty well in the seaway um i'm gonna plug her back in and that's me about it so boom just like that we are plugged back in and probably charging i hope I think so yep charging so 64 percent uh two hours now uh, we like i said i ran it pretty pretty light 10 to 12 brought it up to 16 and then that full speed um run that you saw and that was with the current so we had a pretty strong current as well but um yeah she goes pretty good and um not a not a bad boat um but uh yeah it takes a little getting used to so anyway the x-boat